Alright, so we've got the bushing seated in there nicely. So now the lip seal goes over the top. It's a rubber lip seal that just seals the uh, shaft so fluid doesn't come out. And I want to take some assembly grease so that it doesn't burn up when you put it back in the truck. Okay, so we have two O-rings in here, one O-ring out here. On the outlet fitting we have an O-ring. And just replace the lip seal. And usually, on the back of the housing, these studs will have a small seal that will go right there. Fix here. And you're going to want to take it. Probably run it through some solvent, make sure all the metal, dirt, whatever is out of there. And then uh, we'll come back and put in the new seals and reassemble. Alright, so we're about to put everything back together. Inside that bushing, you're going to want to make sure you put assembly grease in there. Because that's what the shaft will ride on. We don't want to seize. And we'll put some on the shaft as well. We had to clean up this with emery cloth to make it smoother since it had been scored. Here's our two inner o rings. Some light grease on them as well. There's also one right here. Alright, so we got the veins back in the rotor. So the pins in here that hold the plates and the cam ring. Alright, so we put the cam ring on over the rotor. put the thrust plate and the rotor in and just to let you know the shaft may be a pretty tight fit going in there if you have the new bushing on there. We've got all the veins in. They are directional too. What we did is look for the mark 
and the mark faces this way, the way that the uh, road returns, and it's just a distinct line down the vein. And you want to make sure the line on the vein faces this way because they are directional. Now we have the elliptical cam ring. This is the pressure plate spring. The white part fits right in there. This is the end cap. Remember the uh, bowl side faces out. It's going to fit like that. And to hold it in there, we'll go ahead and take our retaining ring and put it on there. And we'll put it in a vise to do this. Alright, so here's it going on. I'll just push in the hammer like that to overcome the spring pressure and put the retaining ring in. I'm just giving that a couple of whacks to be sure that the retaining ring is seated, that the cap won't pop out. Alright, now it's time to put the flow control valve in. Put the spring in first. Then we have this. Make sure that the flat part is facing out. And it should move freely in and out of there. If not, you might want to replace the pump or something. This one's moving good. Now we can put our reservoir on. lined Here's our outlet fitting with our new O-ring seal. Okay. Our new flat O-rings with studs. Be sure that you got this thing in real good. That's what will fly out on you. You lose your parts. Here's our power steering pump, fully rebuilt, studs and outlet fitting in, nice and clean, new seals inside. So we'll go outside and install it in the truck. Alright, so we're ready to install it back into the truck. This is another tool, it's an installer. It just presses the pulley back on the shaft and it uh, screws in right here, so that's how it pulls it down. So what, we're going to do it on the vehicle because we have to bolt it back onto the engine bracket. Basically, we're going to put it on. Screw that down. Have a large wrench to hold it here and a ratchet here. Just keep tightening it and press the pulley on and remember to do that after you have it mounted to the bracket so
Alright, we got that all buttoned up. Alright, so now we've got it all hooked in there. We've got the drive bolt back on. And we have the high pressure hose and the low pressure hose all hooked up nice and tight. So now, get in. Thing. Feels like I've got very good uh, power assist in my steering now. I'm Austin Stramenis, and this is Brian Gray.